I'm not going to mention the name of the wholesaler, but they're one of the largest in the world. And you can, you know, look at it yourself and, and acknowledge that 95% of everything on their inventory list sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Some of it says mid-November. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics and excited to welcome back on into the show Andy Schechtman of Miles Franklin. And it's been a while since we've had Andy on the show, although it was nice to check in with him last week because I hear that uh, conditions in the retail silver, physical silver market have changed quite a bit. So um, fortunately, Andy has checked back in to give us an update. Although, first of all, Andy, it's good to see you again. And how are you doing today, my friend? Good to see you, brother. I miss you, Chris. Uh, I'm well, hanging in there. Glad to see you're looking good, too. And uh, hopefully we get to uh, see each other in person here before too long. Been too long, anyway. Well, that certainly would be nice. And um, although along the lines of silver, which I know is what people at home watching are interested about, Seems like things have changed quite a bit in the recent week or so where sales have picked up. And I know you've been mentioning that a lot of products are getting more difficult to find and get. Certainly, we've seen premiums go up on a bunch of things in the last couple of weeks in general, but was hoping you could shed some light on that and let folks know what's going on out there. Uh, Chris, look, I've been saying this for a long time, and I, I've gotten heat for it for a long time because I'm not quite sure people really understood what I was getting at. When I make a comment like the market will define itself by the inability to easily, readily, and affordably source product, I have meant that to my soul. Uh, people would say, well, I can buy it on SD, I can buy it on JM, I can buy it on Atmex. You know, you guys are selling it. If it's so hard to get, why do you say that? Because really since uh, mid 2020, getting product has become gradually more and more and more difficult and more costly. Um, you have to buy it much uh, more in advance than you ever would uh, as a company in my position. Uh, what used to be days in advance or on the spot uh, could be delivered to you immediately now is actually 60, 90 days or longer uh, in advance where you're buying production on a, you know, two months out uh, on a promise, you pay for it, you hedge it, you run logistics. It's really become almost like a logistics operation. Um, it's getting very tough. And I've watched um, it increase in terms of its difficulty in getting product. Now, I sent you something offline here a few minutes ago. In inventory, I'm not going to mention the name of the wholesaler, but they're one of the largest in the world. And you can, you know, look at it yourself and, and acknowledge that 95% of everything on their inventory list sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Some of it says mid-November. Other things will say you can only buy five one-ounce gold coins or 10 one-half-ounce gold coins or limit to this, or, you know, next allocation 2023. I mean, that's no joke. And when you see premiums on Silver Eagles north of 14, 15 bucks, when you see premiums on Gold Eagles, my cost north of 9%. I've never seen that before in my entire career. My, my uh, recollection will tell me that sometimes when you get past Thanksgiving, the mints will say, hey, when we sell out of this, we're not going to issue anything until, you know, uh, after the new year because this is the new allocation coming out. Well, I've never seen it where um, most of the big wholesalers, the primary U.S. mint distributors, um, their fractional eagles are sold out till 2023. Um, and what made things really unusual to me, and I, I mentioned this on several shows I was on in July or August, uh, I've told you a couple of times throughout the years, starting in 2020, 2021, when you would ask me what percentage of your sales is silver, and I would say 95%. And that's spot on, um, literally, because of you and, 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 you know, Wall Street silver and the silver squeeze and the the um, the understanding of what silver really is. 
and the value that it has, even though the performance of it hasn't accentuated itself yet. Um, there's an awakening. And over the past two plus years, silver is responsible for 95% of everyone's sales in this industry. And what made things really unusual, kind of that hmm moment, was in July or August when the U.S. Mint called us up because we're a one of 27 authorized resellers. So we still talk to the Mint and and they said, hey, you know, we're, we're curtailing gold production by 50% into the second half of the year, which made no sense to me because really gold has been sitting on the shelves of dealers like myself for the most part. I'm being somewhat, um, I'm generalizing, but had been sitting there collecting dust for a while. And now they're not going to sell gold, really, in quantities that are demanded, pushing premiums, wholesale premiums up to me almost three times what they've been my entire career. And on the Silver Eagle right now, those premiums are up over six times what they've been in my whole career. And so from a standpoint of retail supply, it is the lowest I've ever seen in 33 years. It is the most difficult to get product right now that I've ever seen in 33 years. And you know, I assume that it'll it'll replenish come new year, but I would venture to say the second half of the, or the, the rest of this year, rather, we're already past that. The, the, the last quarter of this year, I think, uh, you know, anywhere past uh, Halloween, I think it'll be impossible to find much of anything at all. If it continues down this road and maybe even much before then, getting products can be real tough at the rest of, of 2022. Okay, so two questions that come to mind. It sounds like gold and silver eagles, the premiums are certainly accelerated, but you can get them to some degree. And uh, second to that, are there products which if someone calls and says they want product X that you just simply cannot get right now? Um, when I run out of whatever fractional gold eagles I have, you could put that on that list. Um, uh, silver eagles are really hard right now. Let me back up and put it to you this way. In July, right before July 4th, we were fortunate enough to do that $50 million order. I couldn't do that to save my life right now in American products. So um, are there things that I just can't get? Yeah, there are. I mean, I, I have looked exactly at my inventory but I would tell you that if you are trying to get um, certainly fractional gold eagles, silver eagles in large quantities, uh, silver Britannias in large quantities, um, and in large quantities could be more than a few thousand ounces of silver, um, good luck. No, you can't. Uh, when the queen died, getting anything with her likeness from the United Kingdom has become incredibly difficult. Um, I look at replenishing our, I just looked today at replenishing our, our silver kangaroos. It's five to six weeks. So yes, I can get things, but I'm being told it will be into November. And, you know, some things I'm being told not till 2023. And, and that's most of the U.S. Mint products. So we're not at that point yet where it's just shut off the spigot, but it is dribs and drabs and, and, you know, Taking for granted the ability to do a, a six or a seven figure order with ease, um, it's not, you know, you get a couple of significant seven figure orders and it'll blow out all of our inventory quickly. So yes and no, it's a difficult question to answer. Yes and no, there are some things I'm sure I can't get, but in general, the supply is as thin as I've ever, ever, ever seen it. So are we seeing that it's more that there's an uptick in demand and there's more orders being placed that is trumping what is the normal supply that has been out there? Or is it a matter of that there's less supply on the market, a combination of both or on that spectrum, where does the dislocation seem to be coming from primarily? Both. Uh, you, We've seen much larger orders. We've seen a lot of people who have never bought precious metals before enter the space. Uh, I know that we added over 5,000 new clients in the last uh, quarter. That's unheard of in this industry, like new people who have never been on, on our database. Um, it's both. You have an expansion in the mainstream, but you also have, I think, an awakening globally. You know, it used to be 
um, that, the, that the U.S. was the safe haven. The U.S. was the bastion of safety uh, when everything was, was crazy around us. And so there was less interest in buying precious metals throughout the world. You would buy U.S. treasuries and, and U.S. dollars, and people would, would flock to the dollar uh, to uh, looking at it as a safe haven. I think when you have inflation all around the world, you see what's happening in the United Kingdom where they had to come in and step in and, and get rid and go back to QE uh, and that the uh, the bank had just uh, uh, the Bank of England had to step in and, and you know bail out the pension funds because interest rates were rising. You're, you're seeing war, uh, you're seeing inflation globally all over the place and you're seeing currencies that are being hammered rushing to the bottom uh, um, in, in you know all around the globe the, the yen and the Canadian dollar and the and the the pound and the euro. I mean, they're all getting clobbered. And so people around the world are waking up to what precious metals can do. And I think you have to literally be completely blind to not see what a value silver is, um, not only in its dual utility as an investment monetarily, as a uh, 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 industrial metal that is massively needed in an expanding world, but you're seeing, I think people realize around the globe that, hey, you know, we need to protect ourselves. So four of the six primary mints of the world are across the Atlantic. And all of those countries, I think, are vying for product when they never did the way they did, um, when they never did the way they are now. And so it's not just North America that's trying to get product where there's been an expansion, but it's the rest of the world, I believe, that is accumulating metal that we're all competing for the same dribs and drabs. So it's a little bit of both, but I notice it most when I try to, to restock the shelves. It's, it's crazy how hard it is and how much competition I have that I never did, where if you're not, when something is released, if you don't, in my position, buy it fast, buy a lot of it fast, the next day you go back to talk to them, they're like, sorry, it's gone. And it's disappearing that fast. So it's equal on the supply side and on the expansion. But yet that expansion, Chris, is so little and minimalistic compared to the, the big money and the elephant. You know, us metals people are still the pimple on the elephant's ass. When the elephant comes running through the door, there'll be nothing left. And that's what I've been talking about all along in terms of this awakening when there's that correction where interest rates and asset prices find equilibrium, uh, people are gonna have a religious experience. And if they don't see the value in silver, then they're not looking. And when they finally realize it, it's way too late to find anything in terms of it being available or reasonably priced. And you have the whole world, I think, is gonna come to this conclusion at relatively the same time. Certainly the people in the United Kingdom are, and I just read an article on Canada today that one of the biggest uh, metals uh, retailers in the United Kingdom ran out of product because people are reactionary. There it is. They are reactionary and, and they're not proactive. And, you know, this is why price is the ultimate tool of misdirection, because the, the cartel that has been holding down the price, you hold down the price and then you bleed all of the metal off of the exchanges as they're doing their positioning when the rest of us are posturing and then something like this happens when there's that moment and when that moment happens it's over that's what i've been getting at exactly right there totally yeah i'm glad you mentioned that i did have that pulled up wanted to ask you about that because certainly it's interesting where a lot of other countries where their currency is going down relative to the dollar they're seeing the gold price rise so i'm curious uh, and again we just pulled up the article and and show that there are people buying in england and obviously after what they saw there in the past week that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. What is the reaction like to people who I'm assuming most of your customers are generally U.S. and Canada, but in the U.S. pricing based on the COMEX where the price has actually gone down in the midst of everything that's happening? How are people responding to that and, and what is the, the general feel in terms of seeing the price go down at this particular time? I, I honestly think most people aren't phased by it at all. I think they realize that 
um, I think they realize what a value it is and they, most people just are continuing to add more and they realize that, that it's, that it's make believe. Um, you would think there would be more anxiety and angst about it, but there isn't. And I think people feel even, even though that it hasn't performed the way that we all expect it to yet, I, we aren't getting people selling. We aren't getting people calling and lamenting it more often than not they're calling and adding to their position because it's a gift and you know when you take a look and realize that since march 8th over seventy thousand comex contracts have been covered by the commercial banks over 350 million ounces it's the largest reduction in history um and you know i i think and when you realize that the concentrated short position of the commercial banks is at the lowest levels in history and then you see all, all the metal that is being bled off of the exchanges at the exact same time. Uh, if people really think about that for a minute, um, the most sophisticated, well-funded, well-informed money in the world is positioning themselves to go long. And when you look at the, the commercials as a whole, for some reason, they lump in the, the producers and the hedgers, like, like even a company like mine, where if you hedge product on Comex to protect for price, you're considered a commercial. You take the producers and companies like mine who use it legitimately and just look at the commercial banks, they're really very long in silver. So the biggest, most sophisticated money in the world is long on paper, is bleeding the exchange dry. Uh, and not just the exchange, we've seen 100 million ounces taken out of SLV in the past four months by the authorized participants. So you're seeing the LME, the ETFs, and COMEX being systematically bled dry of their supply. And the largest reduction in, in commercial concentrated short position in history, um, and the smallest short position in history, all of that would say that we are poised for a massive rally. Now, I don't know if people are looking at it that way. I am, but I'll simply tell you that the downdraft in price has nothing to do with anyone selling anything. It has to do with the same old price suppression on COMEX. But this time, it almost seems like it's the managed money that's driving down the price. And I think no one could be happier about that this time than the commercial banks who have flip-flopped and gone long. The question becomes, Does do the commercial banks short the rising price like they always have? If they don't, if this time, because of where we are in this whole big chaotic picture, um, if they don't short the rising market um, and use the nickel market failure as an example of what can happen if you're on the wrong side of a trade. Um, and I think they have because March 8th, when all of this is subsequently changed was the high point, all time high for gold. And and the one year high at that point for silver. And I think when the market in, in London failed, the nickel market, it woke these banks up and they have gone completely 180 degrees. So from a standpoint of being optimistic, I don't think you could ever be so optimistic as to where the price should go. And I think because people are listening to people like you and maybe even a little bit to me and other people out there that are talking this way, they're encouraged and they see the value and one of these days, you can't run from mathematics, you can't run from economics, you can't run from all of this. And I think people are beginning to see the inevitability of, of gold and silver finally accentuating their prices in what ultimately might be a free market, especially if we see a challenging uh, metals platform arise in Moscow, as they're talking about, where the countries that have been massively accumulating all of the metal for the last several years want to value it the right way and and fairly when that happens uh things are going to get very interesting on comex well that certainly would be interesting once they get those things up and running and perhaps not a coincidence that we see a lot of exchanges going on in different locations in the world Although andy last question for you today um i know there was a big story a couple of weeks ago you mentioned earlier that how you had that customer from Texas who did a $50 million order. I know at the time she had mentioned that that might be the first of several, uh, again, with whatever you're able to share publicly. Has there been any further add on to that? Is that uh, lots of discussion? There's been lots of discussion and uh, I'm assuming that there will be. 
Um, nothing to speak of yet, but a good amount of discussion. All righty. Well, certainly, uh, hopefully you can keep us posted if there is any further development there. And uh, just before we wrap up, if folks have questions, would like to get information or pricing on whether they want to buy or sell anything, what is the best way to reach you? And they can send an email to Arcadia at Miles Franklin and uh, someone will respond immediately. And um, we'd be happy to send them out a price list. Our website, which I've been telling the world will be done shortly, is actually almost done. We've had uh, to switch developers in mainstream. We've had operating systems that have been updated that then messed up other parts of the website. It's been one one uh, crazy event after another, we're getting very close. Until then, request a, an updated inventory and we will send that out to you. Our prices will be amongst the very, very, very best in the United States. And uh, we'll do our best to uh, make it a very, very good experience and make sure your listeners are being treated the way you would expect. Well, I appreciate that. And thanks again for shedding some light on what's going on out there. Certainly. Good news to hear that the order flow is that people are still buying and um you know i know it's been a tough year for people who have been invested in the metals for for a while especially seeing the fed hikes and the price come down but good to get an update on the physical level on the retail market and uh, with that said thanks for joining me and we'll look forward to doing this again soon look forward to it as well you stay well buddy well, thank you, Andy. Sure appreciate the update. And hopefully that comes as some reassuring news to many silver investors. I know it's not been the easiest year watching the current environment where the price is falling in the U.S., but hopefully that at least helps you sleep a little bit better at night, especially if you're approaching this from the long term. So great to have Andy back on the show. Real quick before we wrap up, this video was brought to you by BlackRock Silver. And actually today, have a clip of a recent presentation with Andrew of BlackRock Silver, where he talks about their maiden resource and also the expansion of that. Just wanted to play a little bit of that here. We just hit a kilometer away on a vein system. Um, we hit uh, the same vein system that contributed the bulk of our resource a full kilometer away from where the resource ended. And to put this in perspective, the resource was drilled out over 800 meters here. We've hit a kilometer away. Now, it might have got lost on the market and... Um, uh, we didn't really understand the significance until it recently, but we've also hit on this one, another step out right at the edge of our property, a full kilometer away too using the RC. We know the vein keeps going out there. Uh, what we need to do um, is just see if we can hit it with the core rig and hit it in the right um, elevation where we, can, where we can find some grade. We knew the vein was going to be there. We came back with core. We hit up to 700 grams there. So that's certainly good news to see how things are coming along with BlackRock, especially with the expansion of their project. So congratulations to Andrew and BlackRock. Thank you for bringing this this video. And with that said, going to wrap up for today. But we will see you again tomorrow with Don Durrett.